Good morning everybody. Today we are going to describe anatomy of pericardium. Before starting my lecture, let me ask you a question. Why there is pericardium? As you know, heart is the central organ of circulation. It beats throughout the life of an individual. Cessation of cardiac motion means end of life. So this vital organ deserves protection. Nature has given Z plus clarity to it by placing it in the chest cavity, that too in its central, what we call it as middle mediastinum, then protecting it within three coverings of pericardium, which protect it and also facilitate its smooth momentous during cardiac motion that is systole and diastole. Pericardium is defined as a fibrocerous sac that encloses heart and great vessels. It is located within middle mediastinum. It protects and supports heart and prevents its over distension. Pericardial cavity lies between parietal and visceral layers of serous pericardium. This cavity contains 10 to 50 ml of pericardial fluid which reduces friction between parietal and visceral layers of pericardium thus facilitates smooth movements of heart. Pericardium is innervated by pericardiophrenic nerves. It is supplied by pericardiophrenic arteries. Accumulation of excess fluid in the pericardial cavity is called pericardial effusion. It may lead to cardiac tamponade thus reducing cardiac output. Let us go to this diagram to visualize the anatomical position of the heart. Heart first lies in the chest cavity. It is placed by the nature in the middle mediastinum and it is covered by pericardium which protects it. Pericardium is derived from the Greek word which means around the heart. It is a fibrocerous sac which encloses heart and the roots of great vessels. It is located inside middle mediastinum, posterior to the body of sternum and second to six coastal cartilages. It lies anterior to the mid middle four thoracic vertebrae. To explain the position and anterior and posterior relations of the pericardium, let us go to this slide. Inferiorly, it is fixed with the central tendon of diaphragm. Anteriorly, it lies second to six coastal cartilages. And posteriorly, there are middle four thoracic vertebra, that is T5 to T8. And thus, pericardium is a sac surrounding the heart and roots of great vessels. It is composed of two layers. Outer layer is fibrous and inner layer is serous pericardium. Serous pericardium has got two layers, outer parietal layer which lines the fibrous pericardium and inner layer which lines the heart. The two layers are continuous with each other around the roots of great vessels thus enclosing pericardial cavity. This cavity is filled with small amount of fluid which acts as a lubricant and facilitates moments of heart within pericardial cavity. Let us go to this slide to understand the anatomy of pericardium. So pericardium consists of two layers. Outer layer is fibrous. We called it as fibrous pericardium as demarcated by this greenish outline. Fibrous pericardium inferiorly mixes with the central tendon of the diaphragm. Superiorly, it mixes with the adventitia of great vessels. Parietal layer of the serous pericardium is the outer layer which lines the fibrous pericardium and visceral layer of serous pericardium lines the heart. The two layers are continuous with each other around the roots of great vessels, thus enclosing the pericardial cavity. This cavity contains 10 to 50 ml of pericardial fluid, which reduces friction between parietal and visceral layers of serous pericardium. It also facilitates smooth movements of heart. As shown in this animation, this cavity is filled with pericardial fluid. Now let us go to this transverse se section to understand the anatomy of pericardium. Heart is enclosed 
outside by fibrous pericardium, parietal layer of the serous pericardium, line is fibrous pericardium, visceral layer of the serous pericardium, line is heart, between the two layers is pericardial cavity containing pericardial fluid. What are the differences between parietal and visceral layers of pericardium? Parietal layer of serous pericardium is the outer layer which is adherent to fibrous pericardium. In contrast, visceral layer of serous pericardium is adherent to heart. Parietal layer develops from somatopelluric mesoderm, so it is pain sensitive, whereas visceral layer develops from supraplanopelluric layer of mesoderm. Parietal layer is innervated by somatic nerves and visceral layer is innervated by autonomic nerves. So, parietal layer is pain sensitive and visceral layer is pain insensitive. Now, what are the various structures inside the pericardium? Let us give a nick in the pericardium and see the structures which are covered by the pericardium. In other words, what are the contents of pericardium? So, after removing the pericardium, we see inside there is heart with its vessels and nerves, ascending aorta, pulmonary trunk, superior vena cava, it is lower half, inferior vena cava, it is terminal part and four pulmonary veins. Now what are the seat belts of heart? In other words, what are the supports of heart? Attachments of and supports of cardium are inferiorly sent it is fixed with the central tendon of the diaphragm. Superiorly, it fuses with the adventitia of the great vessels. Anteriorly, there are sternopericardial ligaments between the fibrous pericardium and sternum. And posteriorly, there are vertebropericardial ligaments. Anteriorly placed, sternopericardial ligaments are called seed belts of the heart. As shown in this diagram, inferiorly, fibrous pericardium is fused with the central tendon of the diaphragm. Superiorly, fibrous pericardium mixes with adventitia of great vessels. Anteriorly, sternopericardial ligaments provide support to the pericardium. And posteriorly, there are sternopericardial ligaments. Now, what are the functions of pericardium? Why there is pericardium? Pericardium fixes the heart in the mediastinum and limits its motion because of its attachment to the diaphragm, the sternum and tunica adventitia of great vessels. It prevents overfilling of the heart, lubricates serous pericardium and facilitates movements of the heart. It also protects the heart. The fibrous pericardium serves as a physical barrier against various infections. What is innervation of pericardium? Fibrous pericardium and parietal layers of the serous pericardium are supplied by the phrenic nerve. It acts as a sensory nerve for the pericardium. Visceral layer of serous pericardium is supplied by the autonomic nerves, which include both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves. Pain is carried by sympathetic nerves from the pericardium. Phrenic nerve. Phrenic nerve is also called internal respiratory nerve of bell, contains both motor and sensory fibers in the proportion of about 2 is to 1. Its root value is C3, C4 and C5. Fibers arise mainly from C4 with some contribution from C3 and occasionally contribution from C5. As shown in this diagram, phrenic nerve is a mixed nerve. It contains both sensory and motor fibers. It originates from C3, C4 and C5 mainly from C4. It passes through thorax. It gives motor supply to diaphragm and sensory innervation to pericardium through pericardiophrenic nerves. As shown in this figure, phrenic nerve is motor to diaphragm. It is sensory to mediastinal pleura, diaphragmatic pleura and pericardium. It also gives sensory fibers to diaphragmatic peritoneum which line is the undersurface of diaphragm. As shown in this diagram, in case of irritation of undersurface of the diaphragm, pain is referred to the left shoulder. As shown in this diagram, irritation of undersurface of the diaphragm, in case of irritation of undersurface of the diaphragm, 
pain is carried to the left shoulder through phrenic nerve. Now what is sign? It refers to the left shoulder pain that is caused by the irritation of the inferior surface of the diaphragm due to bleeding from supplenic rupture. It was first described by Hans Kehr, a German surgeon. It is an example of referred pain. The irritation to the diaphragm is transmitted as pain signals along the phrenic nerve to the supraclavicular region. This is due to the phrenic and supraclavicular nerves having shared cervical origins of C3 and C4. While Kahar sign, left shoulder pain is commonly a symptom of supremic rupture, right shoulder pain, typically sinus, liver or gallbladder infection. To understand blood supply of the pericardium, let us go to this slide. From the first part of the subclavian artery arises internal thoracic artery. This artery gives pericardiophrenic branches. We supply the pericardium. Inflammation of pericardium is called pericarditis. It is usually present as chest pain. Now what is cardiac tamponade? Cardiac uh, tamponade occurs when fluid usually blood fills the potential space between the heart and pericardium, squeezing the heart and preventing the heart from filling with blood during diastole. Pericardium is a tough fibrous membrane covering the heart and it is not able to expand. This decreases filling of the heart. The decreased filling of the heart causes cardiac output to fall, resulting in hypotension or development of shock. The more commonest cause of this bloody pericardial effusion is chest injury. If left untreated, cardiac tamponade will result in shock and death of the patient. Let us explain the development of cardiac tamponade. As shown in this slide, heart is enclosed within the within pericardium. Between the serous and visceral layers of the pericardium is small amount of pericardial fluid in the pericardial cavity for lubrication. But in trauma, when there is accumulation of the lot of fluid or blood, Within the pericardial cavity, it impairs the filling of the ventricles during diastole, thus leading to decreased cardiac output. So, what hemodynamic changes occur during cardiac tamponade? There is compression of heart due to the fluid in the pericardial cavity, decreased venous return or what we call as end diastolic volume, leading to decreased stroke volume or cardiac output, resulting in, in decreased blood pressure and shock. Let's correlate it physiologically and explain on it on the basis of Frank Storning's law. We state that under normal physiological conditions, heart pumps only that much of blood which it turns to it during diastole. Since this fluid in the pericardial cavity does not allow heart to receive more blood during diastole, so small amount of blood is pumped out of the heart during systole leading to decrease in blood pressure and cardiac output. So cardiac tamponade is a rapid accumulation of fluid in the pericardial cavity. In majority of the cases it is blood after chest injury. Chronic effusion can go up to 1500 ml but acute pericardial fluid accumulation up to 200 ml becomes symptomatic. It causes right ventricular compression which leads to decreased filling and decreased cardiac output, hypotension and shock. How pericardial effusion is managed? It depends upon the cause. If inflammatory, treat the cause. If traumatic, manage the injury. If tamponade occurs, pericardiosynthesis is done to save the life of a person. On X-ray of the chest, cardiac shadow appears enlarged. So, cardiothoracic ratio is greater than 0.5. On performing an echo, fluid can be detected in the pericardial cavity. On performing a CT scan, we can also see the fluid collection in the pericardial cavity. The treatment of this condition is pericardiosynthesis, which is drainage of the fluid from the pericardial cavity. Pericardiosynthesis is also called pericardial tap, is a procedure in which a needle and a catheter is used to remove excess fluid from pericardium. The indications for pericardiosynthesis are 
diagnostic. The fluid is tested for inflammatory cell, the presence of blood and cancer cells. To find out if the fluid collection is caused by infection, trauma or malignancy. Therapeutic. Occasionally it is done in emergency to treat cardiac tamponade, a life-threatening rapid buildup of fluid around the heart that weakens its pumping capacity leading to hypotension and shock. There are two pericardial sinuses, oblique sinus and transverse sinuses. To see these sinuses develop during folding of embryonic heart. The two sinuses are not continuous with each other. Both sinuses open within pericardial cavity. Transverse sinus is important in cardiothoracic surgery. Some authorities consider that oblique sinus is important physiologically. To understand the anatomy of pericardial sinuses, watch my video on pericardial sinuses. I want to summarize this lecture as Pericardium is a fibro serous membrane that surrounds the heart. It protects it and facilitates its movements. It is innervated by pericardiophrenic nerves. Two pericardial sinuses are oblique and transverse sinus. They are formed during folding of embryonic heart. Transverse sinus is bounded anteriorly by aorta and pulmonary trunk and posteriorly by superior vena cava. This sinus may be used for ligation of aorta and pulmonary trunk or coronary arteries. Oblique sinus is a cul-de-sac lying posterior to the left atrium and is open inferiorly. It is also called a cordic bursa, may facilitate distension of the left atrium during diastole. Now let us go for a small quiz based on this lecture. Which of the following statements is false about transverse sinus? A. Openness within pericardial cavity, bounded anteriorly by aorta and fulminate trunk, posteriorly by inferior vena cava, may be used for ligation of aorta and pulmonary trunk. C is wrong statement. Which of the following statement says follows about phrenic nerve? It is a mixed nerve, supplies motor fibers to the pericardium, arises from C3, C4, C5 nerve roots. It, it is unilateral injury, causes paradoxical respiration. B is the wrong statement. Which of the following statements is follows about pericardium? It is a fibrous sac. It is innervated by pericardiophrenic vessels. Not fixed with the central tendon of diaphragm. Facilitates momentous of heart. C is wrong statement. Which of the following structures is called seed belt of heart? Sternopericardial ligaments, vertebropericardial ligaments, central tendon of the diaphragm, phrenico pericardial ligaments. Sternopericardial ligaments are called seed belts of the heart. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe my channel. Press on the bell icon to remain updated about more video uploads.